friends, it is Kim from Boomer Home and Garden. Thanks for so much for stopping back by the farmhouse. Today we're going to talk about spring weather. It's a beautiful rainy day here in Michigan and I say it is a nice day because look behind me and look how well things are bringing up. It is totally beautiful and we are so excited for the growing season. After all, April showers bring May flowers, right? So. Sometimes, though, April showers bring a few other things that we're not happy about, like thunderstorms, high winds, down trees, down power lines, and then we're left with no power. When that happens, I like to be prepared. And so today, I want to help you prepare by bringing you along and showing you how I prep for power outages. Well, and there you have it, friends. That sure escalated pretty quickly. Well friends, here I am back with my power outage tote full of power outage trinkets. And I became aware of prepping for power outages when growing up we lived in the country and there were always power outages. And there is nothing worse than being home alone when the power goes out and you can't find anything to light your way. So I have always had a power outage tote and um, different ways of prepping myself for those power outages and I'll share more about that later. But I want to share with you uh, how I prepare for power outages so that I'm never left alone in the dark scrambling for a way to light the way. So let's get started. The first thing we want to talk about of course is lighting. The minute the power goes out, how do you find lighting? Now, we all don't sit with a flashlight in our back pocket all the time, but it does help to have them close. But one of my favorite things that we have in our house is these special kinds of night lights. Now, it's really nothing special, it's just a regular night light, but this night light will hold a charge and I will link it down below so you will know where to get them. So when the power goes out, this comes on, it still stays on, and you can see your way through hallways and rooms. I have these in several rooms and in the hallways of our home so that we can see to get from one place to another because sometimes when the power goes out, you get the emergency warning that there is severe weather and you need to take cover, which may be going to your basement. So that is my first route is to make sure that I have automatic power. Another item I have in my box, and this is a great tool, and a lot of these things came from the dollar store, and I did it on purpose so that I could show you how to do this on a budget as well. But my second favorite thing to have on hand are these little battery-operated push lights. These are great for your kid's room. You can attach these permanently with screws or with mounting tape that you can get also at the Dollar Tree. And these can be on their bedside tables right along the side so that if the power goes out at night and your kids are in their rooms, of course they're going to be frightened and scared. And so the first thing that they can do is tap the light and the light will come on and they will have light in their bedroom to see to get to you or just see in their bedroom. So that is my second favorite thing to have in my power outage box. Another thing that you can have in your power outage box, uh, I picked this up for a dollar at Dollar Tree and this is just a headlamp. And so if you have to uh, move things or unlock doors or get to somewhere or try to make a sandwich in the kitchen and you need your hands free but you still need light, these are great for one dollar, a little headlamp. They also have these at the Dollar Store and it is just, a, it's a camping light but it uh, has a hanger and it has um, bright lumens in it. It's also double A battery operated and these can be very handy. You can even place uh, so little M hooks on the wall and command hooks and you can 
put them up and you can have them ready to hang these on so that you can also have passage in hallways if you don't have an electrical outlet in your hallway this would work great also next we have these battery operated switches and they are just a switch and I have them in my closet but I also have put two of them at our staircases they are permanently mounted you can do that um, there are two screw places here you can permanently screw them uh, the one in our closet is actually velcroed I have velcro on the wall and then I have velcro across here and they are battery operated so you can easily still get to the battery and if you have to go up and down the steps it is easy just to have a, a regular switch just to switch this on to get up and down the steps this is one of my must-haves also at the Dollar Tree Harbor Freight you can get these just about everywhere now and um, of course it's great to have these little lanterns these are LED now so they're super bright they are also battery operated and one of these would light up just about a whole room so if you have to travel from room to room and of course this has a hanger also making it very convenient but if you need to go into a room and do something you can sit this down and get a full range of light all the way around it so this is a great must have as well and I just found this little gadget also I found this at Walmart the bottom just screws off and it holds three batteries and it also at the bottom it had this little metal and I wasn't quite sure what this little metal ring was and if you pull up both sides it too becomes a hanger so you can hang it upside down or you can fold these down and it has a little switch right here and you have a bright light a medium light and a colored light and it can just sit on your table I thought this was great this was about four dollars so this was a great little light to have so far just about everything I've mentioned uses batteries and batteries can be expensive but we have found a place where you can get batteries relatively very inexpensive and our tests have shown that they last just as long as other batteries and this was quite by mistake we had a pair of headphones that required batteries and uh, you use them when you know you're mowing the lawn or using loud equipment and the batteries go pretty quickly and so you don't want to spend a lot on expensive batteries so we ended up getting batteries from Dollar General now you get this very large pack of 20 AA batteries for only five dollars so that is a very good price to pay um, especially when you're going to be using them mainly just for power outage things and also this little pack of eight AAA batteries is also five dollars and I think you get two C's for five dollars um, I don't have any of those but I'm pretty sure that's what their price point is now of course you want to have flashlights everywhere and you want to make sure this time of year to get out all your flashlights and just look to see if they all have fresh batteries because this is definitely not the time of the year that you want to grab your light and have it not work so make sure your batteries are fresh in all your flashlights and I've talked mainly about all of these battery operated equipment now I always have candles you can get all these little tea lights at the dollar store for a dollar I burn a lot of candles and I'm telling you our house could literally look like st. Mary's during mass any given day but not everyone burns candles so uh, but if you do make sure you have a lighter or matches or this is my favorite candle lighter you can also get these at the Dollar Tree and matches at the Dollar Tree so make sure you have a way to light your matches and have it handy um, your candles not your matches and speaking of candles I mentioned those little tea lights here um, I thought these were great containers these were at the dollar store they are so cute candles and they are full so you can burn them and then you can keep the jar and a tea light would fit in there perfectly and you could have these set out in many places um, 
But if you cannot burn candles, I did think of people who do live in small spaces and or rent property where there are rules about burning things. Of course, the Dollar Tree also has um, these little tea lights that are battery operated so you could keep those going. There are two in a pack for a dollar and you could grab several packs of those and keep them in your tote. And then this is something I've been doing for a long time. I do this when we go camping and these solar lights are at the dollar store for a dollar and they're pretty much 97 cents anywhere for these little ones. Um, but when you have them in the ground outside, they're charging all the time. But when the power goes off, the first thing I do is I go outside and I just take the top off and I bring it inside. And you can totally put that in a cup or a candle holder and that will help emit more light. These are wonderful to have when the power goes out. I have several lining our path coming into our house and when the power goes out, I go out and I grab them. Another thing to make sure that you have on hand for power outages is some hand sanitizer. You may not have access to water for a while. I know living in the country, we have a well, so we're not hooked into city water. But if your power goes out and your well can't pump, then you don't have access to water and you may need hand sanitizer. So I always keep several of those in my tote. And that is my first tote. And now we're going to move on to our second tote. Our next tote is to keep a supply of non-perishable food handy. Now, you can get by with some non-perishable foods like soups and sandwich meats and bread. And, of course, fresh fruit is always good to have. And if you have a grill, rather gas or charcoal it is great to keep a couple cylinders of gas or charcoal on hand because if you do need to cook or heat water you do have that availability to use that as your cooking source but it is always great to have some snack on hand like almonds and some crackers and cookies and of course pouches of tuna fish even if you don't have a can opener handy um, these pouches of tuna fish are very good to eat and now they have chicken breasts as well um, little chicken salad packets so there's lots of options there to cook with so you want to keep a tote of those things ready also and then of course you're going to need a water supply you want to keep a few cases of bottled water on hand in your garage your basement barn refrigerator wherever you have access to put them you want to keep at least two cases of water on hand because power can go out and if you need it to cook with or drink or wash with that is good to have it on hand and also of course um gallons of water now you can get these gallons of water um at your store and most stores for even cheaper you buy the bottle and fill it up and then each time you fill it it's even cheaper and so it's great to have several of these on hand for flushing the toilet and putting a wash tub in your sink so you can wash your hands if you need to. Of course, it is always important to have a battery operated radio handy so that you can hear the forecast and know uh, up to date information on the weather and uh, electricity reports and how and when it's going to be restored and if you need to uh, maybe make secondary shelter arrangements. So always have a radio on hand that is very important. And then another great tip is your phone. Now first of all, if you know bad weather is forecasted and it's coming, make sure you take the time to charge your phones. Number two, stay off social media. If you disconnect from Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you are able to keep your battery running longer. Make sure that there are no other apps running in the background, and that will preserve your battery for when you uh, really, really need it. And um, speaking of the weather, using your weather app, of course, make sure you check it often. I check the weather every day. I get the 10 day forecast. I know um, when the rain is coming. And then of course you have your now button. I use Weatherbug. It is my favorite weather app. Uh, I find it to be for me in my area, the absolute most accurate. 
And so when I am looking at the weather and I can see it come up on the map and I can literally see this kind of activity, this yellow and this red activity going on right here, I know that there is some severe weather coming and I need to be totally prepared. And that is the best step. Check your weather often in the springtime and summer when there are can be a lot of pop-up storms. And even if it looks bright and sunny and they say there's a 70% chance of storms, then be prepared. And just take the time to make your boxes and be prepared and then you are not left unequipped for a power outage. Now, with that being said, I did mention earlier that I have many times been left alone in the dark when the power goes out and having to scramble to figure out where things are. So I do things a little differently. First of all, I do use these night lights that are plugged in and they hold a charge so that for the first few hours of the power outage they stay lit and I can find my way from room to room to figure out where things are but in my instance things are very close right behind our sofa we have a stand and in that stand I keep candles little candle cups to hold the candles and matches and that is less than five feet from my sofa in our kitchen of course we have the flashlights that I showed you, they are always right by the back door because when you live in the country, sometimes you have to go out at night to inspect when you hear noises. And so I always have them by the door, but I also have this light. This is an LED strip light and it is very, very bright. It uh, stays in that drawer because uh, we have a yard light right outside our house, but when that power goes out, it is pitch black and you can't even see outside the door. So if somebody's walking up on your porch, you really can't see them. So this sets outside, there's a shelf by the door and it sits right by the door and this becomes our outdoor light. Could also do that with solar powered spotlights. They do make those now and you can keep them outside and then of course you can transfer them to your porches and they will light your porch and your steps should you need to do that. And of course, you can put these in your basement. I have um, a newer set under my kitchen counter, uh, under the upper cabinet, so there's always light in the kitchen. So I am never more than five feet away from a working light during a power outage because when you're in the country, it can be very dark and you need to find your way around very quickly. Like I said, especially if any of those uh, weather outages power outages bring severe weather with it and you've got to retreat to a safe place. It is really good to have that light extra close. So I do have my little power outage tote, but I always have things within five feet of me in every room so that I can get from place to place and be able to cook and make a sandwich or any of those things that I need to do. And then I just have one more tip for you to help you be able to find those boxes and bins or baskets or whatever you use for your power outage trinkets um, and make them very easy to find. Last tip is to share with you this running reflective bracelet and you can literally use anything reflective. They have uh, reflective tape at all the farm stores and Harbor Freight. Um, this I got in the sporting goods department and it is simply a Remember those snap bracelets from the 90s? Was it the 90s? Um, that makes me sound old, doesn't it? Um, yeah, those snap bracelets. Well, this goes on your wrist. It's just snappy and it's adjustable so that when you're running, it can go on your foot or when you're pedaling your bike, um, this attaches to your body at somewhere so that you can be seen when lights hit you. And so for me, I am going to use this just on the end of my tote. And when I store my tote, I want this facing frontwards. Because when you hit this, if you have your, the flashlight on your phone, or you have the flashlight in your hand, a regular flashlight, and you shine it on this, this is going to reflect. You can totally secure this. You can glue it on with hot glue. You can tape it on. Uh, and depending on what other kind of tape or reflectors, you could even use the little reflectors that go at the end of your driveway. 
um, my tote was not solid enough to do that. But you could put this on your tote and when the light hits it, it will reflect and your tote will stick out. So if you have this in a storage space, in your closet, in your basement, in your barn, in your garage, no matter where you put this tote, when the light hits it, this bar is gonna reflect and you will know exactly where your tote is and you can access it very quickly. Well friends, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for coming along. If this inspired you to create your own kit, please leave a thumb up and comment down below uh, any other ideas that you have for putting in a bin such as this. I'm sure everyone else would love to hear your ideas as well as I. And if you are new, please take a moment to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you will be alerted as to when I post more videos like this one. Everybody be blessed, be safe, and I will see you next time.